Welcome everyone, and uh, my name is Susan, and we're going to do a lovely little yoga class today. So, comfortable on your sit bones. Now, if you can't sit cross-legged, sit whatever position is comfortable for you, okay? Now, back is straight, shoulders are relaxed. So, quick little recap or refresh of the breathing. And I always gently redo this because some people are familiar with the breathing, some people maybe not. Breathing is a very fundamental part of our yoga practice. And it's really helping you how to relax too. And that's, that's important as well. That's why you're here. So the breathing is in through the nose, out through the nose. Nice, long, full, smooth breath. You inhale completely. Always try and hold your breath suspended for a couple of seconds and then exhale fully. That's it. Now it takes a little while to get a rhythm going, to really be able to open up those lungs and take that beautiful deep breath. So just do what you can, don't overthink it, all right? But don't hold your breath either, all right? So every breath you take is long and smooth the whole time we're together. And even when I'm talking or demonstrating, keep breathing, all right? And I will cue you on your breath when I say the next exhale or your next exhale is when we move, we always move on the exhale. And again, do what you can, listen to your body, pay attention to how you feel, how you move. If anything we do is gonna cause um, you pain or aggravate a condition or something like that, you know, take it easy, make little adjustments along the way if you can. I can show you a few different ways to modify things or just skip it all together, all right? I don't want you to strain yourself. Okay, so. That being said, um, we always start the class with a couple minutes of breathing and pranayama. All right, prana is, uh, prana is breath, pranayama is breath control. And every week, every class, I choose a different mudra, which is a different hand gesture. So if that's not your thing, not your cup of tea, just put your hands on your lap and you can breathe that way. But those of you who wanna do uh, our lovely little mudra, Today we're going to be sitting in Sunni Mudra, which is your middle finger, which represents giving patience and the law of karma. Connect it with your thumb, which represents your ego. Together, palm up. Close your eyes, sitting tall. Let's take a big breath together. Inhale. Try to relax those shoulders. Take one more breath. Continue on your own personal pranayama for the next two minutes. Let's slow things down. Now's the time. Close your, um, I want you to choose an intention for your practice today. Focus on any situation in your life that needs guidance from your higher self. It's time to lower the heart rate, lower our blood pressure, and lower our anxiety level. Try to find stillness in mind and body. One more breath. On the next exhale, I'd like you to bring your hands together, rub them very vigorously, activate your hand chakra. Hands onto your heart center, close your eyes. Let's take a nice long, smooth breath together to tune out, inhale. One more big breath. And on the exhale, drop three fingers if you can. Take a breath and on your next exhale, let's see if we can reach up. Now, if you can, as high as you can go, if this bothers your shoulders, bring your arms down a little bit lower if you need to. That's what I mean by making adjustments. Let's reach, let's wake up that physical body, lengthen and release that spine. One more breath. On the exhale, hands together, I want you to bring the forward shoulder height, and I want you to lace your fingers together. Now, what we're gonna do here is start releasing the upper back and the shoulders. So, if you wanna bring your arms down a little bit lower, that's fine as well, but not any higher. On the exhale, reach. Now try to sit tall and relax those shoulders, and just go as far as comfortable. Let's open up the shoulder blades, the shoulders, the upper back. Breathe. One more breath. On the next exhale, release the hands very slowly and gently put them on the floor right beside your hips. This is a version of the seated fish pose. Take a breath. On the exhale, bring the shoulders up, bring them back, slide them down. And I want you to 
but bring those shoulder blades together as tight as you can, squeeze. And now we're gonna focus on opening up, releasing the tight pectorals, the tight chest, the front of the deltoid, open up the rib cage and your heart center. One more breath. On the next exhale, shoulders up, forward, bring them down, hands on the lap. Let's roll the shoulders up, roll them up. If your shoulders are tight, if they're stiff, just do what you can. The more you do it, the better they feel. And as you roll the shoulders out, this is a nice way to start releasing the tension that we hold in our shoulders and our neck as well, and increase the circulation in the upper body. All right, so let's move along. Left hand on the floor beside the left knee. Now this is where our little block comes in. So let me show you three ways to do this one here. The deepest version is elbow on the floor, my arm comes up to the ceiling without my right sit bone coming off the floor, that is. Now, if that's really literally too deep of a stretch, this is where my little lovely block comes in. And what I'm doing is I'm putting it beside my left knee and I'm resting my elbow on the block. So now what we do is you can't get to the floor, we bring the floor up to you. Now, if you don't have a block handy, what you can do is just reach your hand out a little bit and just bend the elbow and lean. You can do it that way. You don't even have to put the elbow on the floor. So, Left hand on left, uh, right hand on right knee, left hand into position. Let's go, inhale, right arm up. And exhale, as you lean on the elbow. Now my arm is nice and straight. So again, being aware of your alignment. So try, be aware that you're not like leaning forward or all twisted back as best you can. And if you wanna go even further and get that little extra stretch today, reach a little bit over your head lengthening, releasing the whole right side of your body. Spread those fingers like rays of sunshine. One more breath. Exhale, right hand to right knee. Stay in this position with the left elbow. And on the exhale, I want you to push away on the right knee, bring your right shoulder a little bit closer to the left knee. Now you can keep the arm straight if you want to soften the elbow, that's fine. So this is an upper back, shoulder and all the way down. I just, you don't have to go far to feel this one. So you don't have to be aggressive or force your body. Just let it happen. And let's release. Exhale, come to center, come up. Good, let's go to this side here. Take your little block if you're using it. Make sure you're comfortable on your sit bones. Left hand on left knee, right hand into position. Straight spine always. Let's inhale, left arm up. Now this one here you can actually also do with your hand on your hip. So if you prefer to put your hand on your hip and do it that way, absolutely. Always find a place where you can manage comfortably. Don't overstrain yourself. Keep an eye on the breath. The breath is there to guide you, to help you with your moving. On the exhale, left hand to left knee. And then push away gently. Try to relax, breathe. One more breath. Exhale, bend the elbow, come to center, come up very slowly. Perfect, all right. Inhale, arms out. Exhale up. Inhale into a gentle back bend or just reach up to the ceiling if that's all you can manage. Reach, breathe. Mm -hmm. One more breath. On the exhale, I want you to bring your arms and hands down right onto the floor. So what we're gonna do here now is you're gonna lean forward. I want you to keep your back straight, hinging at the hips. Put your hands right here. On the exhale, I want you to lean forward a little bit. Now you can keep your bend your elbows and stay here. You don't have to go far. But those of you who want to go a little deeper, you can come down on your forearm. And if you want to go even further, you can stretch the arms out. If you want to bow your head a little, that's fine. This is a really beautiful stretch, lengthening your spine, the muscles up and on the back, the shoulders. One more breath. On the exhale, stay low and I want you to shift your body weight to the left. Weights on the left thigh, right hip on the floor, and you can start right here. You can just lean. And if you want to go a little further, you can kind of reach a little bit more till you find that place that feels just right. We're going to gain that beautiful lengthening again on the right side of the body. One more breath. Exhale, stay low, and just very slowly shift your body weight to the right. Weights on the right thigh, left hip on the floor. Relax those shoulders. And here again, go to where it feels the best for you. 
You know, some moves you don't have to go very far. Some people have to go a little deeper to feel the stretch. That's where they are in their practice, or that's just the way their bodies are set up. Some people barely move and you're good to go. Now while you're here, let's recognize and release the tension that we hold in our face. So I want you just to really squeeze all the muscles in your face, scratch your face up as tight as you can, hold it. Let it go, relax your facial muscles, push the tension through your body into the ground for one more breath. And on the exhale, slowly come back to center, come up slowly. Again, everything's nice and slow and gentle and careful. All right, if you need to, roll the shoulders up. All right, let's loosen up those legs a bit. So now we're gonna get into our butterfly or bound angle pose. Now, feet together, wiggle around, make sure you're nice and comfortable. So this particular position here, this stretch is gonna be focusing on releasing the inner thighs, opening up the hips gently, the tight buttocks and the pelvic floor groin area. So I'm going to give you three ways to do this one here, and then you can decide on what you want to do. The deepest version is hands on the ankles, elbows on the knee, knees, and I'm leaning forward. Another version is if you find that this is as far as you want to go or can go, just put your hands on your legs and just kind of hang out here. Just sitting like this, you should feel it anyway. Or if you want to put your hands beside your hips, bring the shoulder blades together, and do it that way, all right? By doing it this way, you get a little extra stretch into your chest while you're in this position, all right? So again, another thing, another pointer is trying to keep your back straight, head level with your spine. So I don't want you bowing your head and rounding your shoulders or your back as best you can. So I'm gonna do it the deeper version. So um, ready? On the exhale, we're gonna lean. Now those of you in this position here, lean forward. A little bit of pressure on your knees is okay, but don't slam down on those knees. If you feel that you want to go further, just lean forward a little bit more until you find a place that's just right. You find your edge, and that goes with every move, every stretch, everything we do. You find your edge, the place where it just feels right. You don't necessarily have to go further. You can if you want, but you don't have to. Let's take one more breath. Exhale, come up slowly, all the way. Okay, perfect, bring the knees up, and now we're gonna open up the legs into a nice big V, all right? So, nice big V, all right? Toes pointing up to the ceiling, we're gonna have hands right in front here. So now we're gonna do a nice little stretch. This is focusing on the back of the leg, the hamstring, knees, and calves. So you're gonna have your hands right here. All I want you to do is lean forward. You can bend your elbows and just stay right here. Some of you want to crawl your fingers and some can come all the way down on the forearms. This is a pretty dynamic stretch. So be very gentle with this one here. You're going to feel it just sitting like this. You should feel it anyway. Now again, make sure your back is straight, your neck is long, and your head is level with your spine. So what I mean is you're not bowing your head and rounding your back as best you can. Hands right here. Relax. Take a breath. And exhale. Start leaning. Now, every time you exhale, if you can, you can go a little further. Again, till you find that little, the edge, and you're fine. Now, wherever you are in this particular position or stretch, think about how your knees and your quads feel. If you find that they're really tight, try to relax them. So you really focus on exactly the position you're in, the muscles you feel being lengthened and stretched and released. One more breath. Exhale, come up slowly. All right, good, so far so good. Let's straighten the left leg. Now, the left leg, make sure you line it up with the hip. So we're gonna get into our lovely twist pose, so bring up the right knee. Now, what I'd like you to do, if you can, is take the right foot and put on the outside of the left knee. So I'm gonna give you two versions of this one here. There's actually a few more, but we're just gonna focus on two today. <clears throat> Pardon me. So left hand is on the uh, right knee, my right hand is behind the back. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look over the right shoulder. This is a gentle spinal twist. So be very gentle and careful. If you have issues with your back or your spine, you don't have to torque your back or your neck. You go very gently and slowly until you find a place that feels just right. Back up if, or come out of it if you have to. Now, this is the position we're going to try and work with today. If this is really uncomfortable, put your foot on the inside of the knee and do it this way. All right, so that being said, left hand on the right knee, right hand behind the back, take a breath to center, and on the exhale, look over the right shoulder. 
Even in the twist pose, the breath is exactly the same. Keep your back straight, try to relax the shoulders. Now once you're comfortable, if you find that you want to go a little further, push on your knee a bit to the left, you'll get a little bit more if you feel you need it today. Some days you need a little deeper stretch than other days. One more breath. Exhale, release, slowly. Counter pose, straighten the right leg, bend the left one. If you can, put it on the outside of the left foot on the outside of the right knee. Keep it on the inside if that works better for you, of course. Right hand on left knee, left hand behind the back. On the exhale, look over the left shoulder. And here again, maybe this is the side of your body that's a little easier to work with. Maybe you can go a little further, or maybe not. Now let's focus on the health of our spine, keeping it strong and balanced and supple, flexible. Releasing the nerves, the blood vessels, the muscles up and down your spine. One more breath. Exhale, release. And that's it. Straighten the legs. Roll the shoulders up. Roll them out. Leave. Let it go. Release everything. Okay, so this is our lovely staff pose. So this is a neutral position. So I'd like you to sit nice and tall. And again, being aware of your posture. So what I'd like you to do from here is, uh, before we do anything else, we're going to do a little neck stretch. And then we'll work on our hands and our feet. So sitting tall, just put your hands on your lap and let's see if we can release any tension we have in our neck. You might not even know it's there. Now be very careful and gentle. If you have issues with your neck or your upper spine, be very careful. Skip it if you need to. That being said, sitting tall, take a big breath. And on the exhale, we're gonna tilt your head back. And as you release the little muscles in the neck, you increase the oxygenation into your brain. You get that beautiful, fresh blood flow, helping with your memory, your decision-making, your thought process. On the next exhale, bring your head up to neutral position. Take your breath, and on the exhale, if you can, just kind of drop it over the right shoulder. It's not gonna go very far. Relax that right shoulder, feeling that very gentle stretch onto the left side of the neck. On the next exhale, we're going to bow our heads. You're going to roll it to the front. On the exhale, releasing the top of the cervical spine, the back of the neck. And one more breath. On the exhale, roll your head over the left shoulder. From here, bring your head to neutral position. Let's do a shoulder shrug. Take a breath. On the exhale, bring the shoulders up, and I want you to have your ears as tight as you can. Squeeze. This is a nice, easy, quick way to release tension into the shoulders, into the upper body. And let it go. Let it go. Exhale. Now roll them around again. See if you're starting to notice a difference. Maybe they're getting a little looser. Wonderful. Okay, so let's uh, focus on our hands and our feet now. So from here, I want you to point your toes, all right? To get a little stretch on the top of the foot. Left hand, reach out, just the left hand. Keep the fingers open, bend at the wrist, and slightly turn out to the baby finger. Now again, being aware of your posture. So this is a beautiful, gentle lengthening. It's a very static position or stretch as well. For the uh, extensor muscles in the forearm, the wrist, and the hand. One more breath. On the exhale, <clears throat> excuse me, straighten hand, bring it up. Take the right fingertips, gently bring back the left ones. So again, releasing the hand, the wrist, flexor muscles underneath. And just go as far as you need to go. You don't have to be again. You don't have to force your body. And let's release, exhale, release. Now I want you to relax your feet. Now, uh, if you want a little extra calf stretch, you can get your heels off the floor. If you prefer to keep your heels on the floor, keep them on the floor. Let's come to this side here to the right. Relax the shoulders, bend and just twist it, turn it a little bit out to the right. Focus on exactly what you're doing, the part of the body you're working with right now. The rest of your body is completely relaxed and calm. Your breath is flowing. You might even have a little smile on your face. On the exhale, straighten hand, bring it up. Right finger, left fingertips on the right, bring it back. Some stretches we do are very dynamic. You feel them, some are static. You don't feel them as much. The same activity is going on in your body. Release, <clears throat> excuse me, heels on the floor. So now let's work those fingers. So what we're going to do today 
is you're going to be touching the tip of each finger. So when you do that, I want you to, when you get, let's say, for instance, the index finger to the thumb, I want you to kind of pinch it a little bit tighter to create a little bit of tension, and then you're going to release it. So now we're going to focus on really articulating those lovely fingers. So sitting tall, relax your shoulders. Ready? We're going to do both hands at the same time. Inhale as you pinch the index to the thumb. Exhale, release. Keep going. Inhale. And if you watch your fingers, you're going to notice that you're pretty well articulated. You're moving all the little joints in the fingers. So we want to release those joints. We want to lubricate them and just release the tight muscles, the nerves, the blood vessels, the same as every other part of our body, fingers and toes included. And then work, when you get to your baby finger, work your way back. Just pinch them together just a little bit. You don't have to overdo it. <clears throat> Lovely. And then once you get back to your thumb, <clears throat> I want you to stretch them out. Very important that we pay attention to our hands and our feet. Let them hang, roll them around gently, slowly, and then play, if you want, play a little piano while you're here. All right, perfect. And then shake it out, shake those hands out. Let's go down to the ankles and the feet. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do a supination and a pronation. So all I want you to do is you might want to open up your legs just a bit. You're going to roll them in so that you touch your big toe, and then you're going to roll them out. That's it. So we're focusing on the ankle and the foot. Now, this action comes from the hip. So when you roll it in, the whole leg works as a unit. And this is that nice big ball and socket that is rolling, that is moving the leg in and out. So again, when you're doing this, try to focus, make sure the leg stays nice and straight and your foot goes one way and your knee goes the other. Not that that would happen, but just being aware of that. Again, we're gonna do it four times. So position of your arms, you can have your hands beside your hips, or if you want, you can kind of hang back and relax and do it this way, all right? Ready? Let's go, inhale. And out. And inhale. Breathe. Feel that breath. Surrender to your breath. It's there to guide you, but help you control your movements as well. That's why the breathing pattern is so important. Let's do one more. And that's it. That's the last one. Now bring your feet to a neutral position. Let's play a little piano with your toes. Even with socks on, wiggle those toes around. It's ideally um, good to practice around the end because you can go a little faster. You can add the fingers and the hands. You can go a little faster. Yeah, ideally, it's a good idea to be barefoot, bare feet when you do this. But if you have to have your socks on, that's fine. Just being aware that when we do stand up, that you don't have, uh, you're not too slippery and you're sliding around. Okay, so now let's start moving. Let's get into our table, onto our hands and knees. All right, so this is where, um, when I have my classes, I offer these little extra pads that I've made up. They're just Pilates mats that I cut up. And, you know, sometimes it's all you need to make it a little more comfortable for your knees or your wrists or your, you know, if you want to sit on it, wherever you want to put it. And um, you can use a thin blanket, a thin towel, or a really thin pillow as well. Make yourself comfortable. So that being said, table. Alignment, ankle to knee, knee to hip, knees are hip distance apart, arms are lined up, head is level with your spine. Let's do some cat and cow, let's work that spine. Inhale, head up, sacrum up, C scoop spine. And on the exhale, arch the back, chin to chest, belly button to spine. Try to relax your thighs while you're doing this. Keep going, inhale up. Really working, releasing, lengthening that spine. Working the upper back. This is a beautiful stretch for your lower back. Keep going. Cat and cow. Breath in motion. Meditation in motion. And one more. All the way. When you finish your last position, bring yourself to straight neutral spine. Stay here a little bit longer. If your wrists are getting a bit tired, take a second, shake them on if you have to. Um, if you want, you can also go on your fists. If that helps, it'll just change the angle of the wrist if that uh, makes it better for you. 
Uh, let's work our hip a little bit from here. We're going to do revolving tabletop. Take a breath and on the exhale, push the hip up to the right as you look over the left shoulder. One more breath. Exhale, swing those hips to the left, look over the right shoulder. One more breath. Exhale, swing the hips to the right, look to the left. You feel a beautiful stretch for the glute, the lower back, and the hip abductors. One more time to the left. Exhale, swing. Look over to the left, look over the right. From here, come to center, prepare for child's pose. Open up the knees a wider if you need to. If you can, on the exhale, I want you to lean back. Now, child's pose, make sure um, that your head and your neck are supported properly on your stacked fist. Some people like to rest their forehead on their block, stacked hands, or on the floor. This is a resting neutral place and a full body stretch, child's pose, balasana. So let's take this time just to thank ourselves for being here. You know, taking the time and making the time just to kind of step away from everything, the business of the outside world of your life. Come and hang out on your mat for a while. For whatever reason brings you here, maybe you just want to have a little stretch. Maybe you just want to clear your mind, turn your brain off for a while. No interruptions, no distractions, just you. Release. Relax. And always remember that yoga is not about the shape of your body. It's about the shape of your life. One more breath. On the exhale, I want you to come out of your child's pose. We're going to come right onto the floor. Now, we're going to work some upper body. So we're going to come all the way down onto your belly. And I want you to come into this position here. I'm going to make sure you can see me okay here. So, pelvis and hips anchored to the floor. We're going to do our low plank dolphin. Sphinx, Cobra, and Upward Facing Dog, and then come all the way up to Downward Dog. So there's a lot of powerful positions here. This position you're in right now is our Sphinx. So when we start moving, if you find that some of them are a little bit too intense for you, come here and stay here as long as you want. This particular position, our Sphinx Pose, is a gentle back bend, but also working upper body strength. So that being said, we're going to do our low plank right now. So from here, curl the toes. We're going to get your body off the floor. Take a breath. And on the exhale, body up, back is straight. Look at the floor. Breathe. Dolphin, exhale, push yourself up. Stay on the forearm. One more breath. Exhale, come down slowly, uncurl the toes, sphinx. Breathe. All right, so we're going to try our little cobra. So hands beside the chest, you're going to bring your chest up, keep your pelvis and hips on the floor. On the exhale, come up, bring the shoulder blades together. Bhujanasa, cobra. Upward facing dog from here, all the way. Pelvis and hips off the floor. Down dog. Ready? Go. And up. Set yourself up. Let your balance. Get that tail up high. Back is straight. Head hanging down. Walk yourself. Uh, let's walk the dog. Inhale. Bend the right knee. Exhale, switch, bend the left knee. Your body will rock slightly. This is a nice calf stretch. Walking the dog. From here, let's get up to mountain. Come up very slowly, any way you can. All right, let's get off the floor for a little while. Roll the shoulders out, shake those hands out. If their wrists are a little tight, shake it out, shake those legs out. All right, get the kinks out. Standing nice and tall into our mountain. Feet are anchored to the floor. Again, always being aware of your posture. And let's breathe into our mountain, Tatasana. Try to slow down your breath, slow down the heart rate. If you ever find that you lose track of your breath, just pause for a second and see if you can get it going again. Get that rhythm going. Sometimes I know it's hard. Sometimes you tend to lose track of your breath. That's okay. That happens. But try to get it going again. Slow it down. 
All right, so let's keep moving. So from here, we're gonna work on a balanced position, our standing pigeon pose. All right, so whenever we do any balanced positions, a little tip that I'll offer you is to stare at this spot on the floor in front of you. Don't look at anybody else, don't look around, just stare at that spot, it helps a lot with your balance. Now with the standing pigeon pose, let me show you what the actual position, and I'll show you another way you can do it as well. So what I'm gonna do here, taking my right foot, and I'm putting it right on my knee, just like this, all right? Now, if you find that that's really not gonna feel good for you or it's not gonna happen, um, you can put your foot like this on your ankle. Or if you want, just get your foot off the floor, okay? Whatever, however you feel today. Because some days, you know, we're more balanced than others. Some days it works, sometimes it doesn't. It doesn't really matter. So, that being said, I'm gonna come right here. So, pigeon, standing pigeon. Ready? Big breath. Exhale, right foot on the knee. This is externally rotating the hip as well. Now the arms can come out here if you want, or if you want, you can put your hands right here. Standing tall, breathe. One more breath. Exhale, release. Prepare for chair pose. Inhale, exhale, sit back in your chair. Now, this one here, visualize you're sitting on the very edge of the chair. Knees and toes are lined up as best you can. Try not to force your knees forward as best you can. Keep an eye on those knees. One more breath. Exhale, mountain. All right, coming to the top of the mat, take a breath. On the exhale, step back with the right leg. Find your left lunge, warrior two. Left arm to the front, right to the back. Arms are shoulder height, back is straight. Looking at the tips of the left fingers. Perfectly anchored, perfectly balanced. Reverse warrior on the exhale. Right hand on the back of the right leg. Left arm comes up. Keep your left lunge. Now this one here, you can put your hand on your hip, on the back of the leg. If you want to go deeper, you can slide down a little further if you want. Try to keep your body as straight as you can. Side angle from here, exhale, left foot on the left lap, right arm comes up. Now, to the ceiling. If you wanna go deeper, you can reach a little bit more in front of you. Try to keep your body as straight as you can. Side angle, we're gonna do triangle, right arm up to the ceiling, straight and left leg. Now the left hand can come inside of the knee, calf, or a little further down, triangle. Beautiful stretch for the legs. Trikinasa. Mm -hmm. Preparing for beast straddle split on the exhale. Bring the right arm down, turn your feet to center. Whoops. And fingertips, knuckles, hands on the floor. If this makes you dizzy, come up halfway if you have to. All right, so now we're gonna do the other side. Preparing for triangle, the right. So turn your feet to the right. Right hand on the inside of the right leg, left arm comes up. Side angle, find your right lunge, right forearm on the lap, left arm is up. You can have it here. If you want to go a little further, you can reach out in front. Try to keep yourself nice and straight. Reverse warrior on the exhale. Left arm back of the left leg, right arm comes up. Keep your lunge all the way. Warrior two, on the exhale, straighten your spine, left arm up, looking at the tips of the right fingers, back is straight, shoulders are relaxed. Nice little uh, right lunge.
One more breath. Preparing for mountain from here on the exhale, straighten the right leg, windmill, left arm down, step forward and back to mountain. Lovely. Roll the shoulders out, roll them out. So from here, we're gonna come, uh, we're gonna do our chair. Inhale and exhale, chair again. One more breath, mountain, come up slowly. Roll the shoulders up quickly if you need to, and let's do our pigeon with the left one now, again. Um, right foot nice and anchored, ready? Let's see what we can do now. Big breath. One more breath. And release, come to mountain. Perfect, lovely, roll the shoulders up. All right, so let's get ourselves back down onto the floor, onto your hands and knees, we're gonna do a couple of cat and cows. Come down nice and slowly. Into table, ready? Inhale, head up, sacrum up, see scoop spine. Exhale, arch the back, chin to chest, belly button, spine. And up. Just release everything. Now bring yourself to straight neutral spine. I want you to very gently get yourself onto your back now. All right, perfect. Now, we're gonna do a couple of lovely little moves down here. We're gonna start with our bridge pose. So come down very slowly, adjust your back and shoulders. Let me get this out of the way. All right, so our bridge pose. Now, bridge pose is again working on spinal flexibility. You're gonna work some quads, you're gonna work some glutes as well. So let me show you this one here. I need you to bring your heels a little bit closer to your sacrum area. And what that's going to do is gonna line the ankle up right underneath the knee. The arms, you can put them out wherever you want. So let me show you quickly. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna press on my feet, I'm gonna squeeze my glutes, I'm gonna bring myself up, and then exhale down. Now when you come down, try not to touch the floor if you can help it, just try to hover. If you have to touch the floor, don't worry about it, but try not to, okay? So this one here, you're gonna feel it really intense into the quads as well. So when you come up, press on the feet, squeeze those glutes, that'll give you a little extra power to get up. Just get off the floor, don't worry about how high. Relax the shoulders, we're gonna do it four times. Up and down, ready? Go, inhale up. And exhale. Keep going, and up. Again, and up. One more time, up. And down, all the way, very gently. Bring your back onto the floor carefully. All right, so before we get into a stretch, we're gonna do it again. But this time we're gonna add our leg. So let me show you this one here. When you come up, you're gonna press on the left foot only, you're gonna release the right leg and you're gonna bring it up. And then you're gonna come down, back touches the floor, your toe touches, and then you're gonna come up again. All right, so again, four times on each side. Do what you can. Don't worry about your leg coming up to the ceiling. Just get your leg off the floor if you can, all right? If it's uncomfortable or too much, come down and go back to what we just did with both feet on the floor. Or just rest if you want. Ready? Inhale up. And down. Come all the way. Inhale up. And up. One more time. Take a second, take a breath, relax. Let's do the other side. So adjust your uh, right heel, make sure it's nice and close and go. Inhale up. And again. One more time, and up, down. J 
Gently bring your back onto the floor very carefully. Now we're gonna go into a double hug so we can really stretch that spine out. Carefully and very slowly bring your knees up, give yourself a hug, and let's counter pose that spine. If you want, you can rock a little bit. Bridge pose is a back bend as well. So now, by giving yourself a hug, we release your spine, keeping your spine nice and safe. When we bend it one way, we always bend it the other. Keeping it balanced. Rock and breathe. So this particular here stretch is going to release, lengthen that spine. Give yourself a lovely back massage. Rock and breathe. And it's a bonus stretch for your knees and your, your thighs and your glutes as well. Really focusing on our back and our spine. Try to relax your shoulders. Slow that breath down. And when you get to the left, if you'd like to do some little circles, really focusing on releasing that lower back just a little bit more. Oh. And then if you'd like to go to the right, little circles. You can make big circles, little circles, whatever you feel, whatever your body needs right at this point. Knees to center, soles of the feet onto the floor. Reclining bound angle, feet together. If you can, let your knees fall open. Put your arms out wherever you want them to be. And just rest and breathe. And think about how heavy your body is feeling right now. Really starting to melt right into the ground. Hmm. Beautiful extra stretch for the inner thighs, the hips, the glutes, and the pelvic floor groin area while you're here. One more breath. On the next exhale, prepare to bring your legs together. So use your hands, bring your knees together very gently. Now keep your knees where they are. We're going to do a twist pose from here. So inhale, arms up to the ceiling. Exhale, let them fall shoulder height. And if you can, on the next exhale, drop your knees to the left as you look over the right shoulder. Now you can straighten your legs a little bit. Just let them fall. They don't necessarily have to touch the floor. So this is a gentle spinal twist. And you get an extra bonus stretch into the right hip area as well while you're here. One more breath. On the exhale, very slowly and carefully bring your knees up, adjust your shoulders and your neck for comfort. And on the next exhale, if you can, drop your knees to the right as you look over the left shoulder. You can straighten your legs a little if you need to. One more breath. On the next exhale, slowly bring your knees up very gently. Straighten your legs one at a time. Inhale, arms up to the ceiling. Exhale, let them fall over your head. Make sure they land right on the floor. And let's stretch that body out now. Fingertips to the tips of your toes. And if this bothers your shoulders, you can reposition your arms and put them anywhere you'd like. So I want you just to rest and just stretch. Make yourself long and tall. And every time you exhale, feel your body getting heavier and heavier, just melting right into that mat. Feeling peaceful and tranquil, maybe a little content as well. It's important for relaxation, have a tension-free body, a tension-free mind. All that energy is flowing energy, which is our life force. One more breath. On the next exhale, I'd like you to bring your hands to the side of your body, palms facing the ceiling. Hands are open to receive guidance from your higher self. And let's prepare for our closing savasana, meditation, relaxation, reflection time. However you choose to bring this into your practice today, resting comfortably in your corpse pose. At this point, some people like to bend their knees, some people like to lay on their side, some like to have a little blanket or even a little pillow under their head. But I want you to find a place on your mat where you can rest comfortably now. You don't have to move anymore. No more moving. Just rest. But now I really want you to feel your breath. Now that you're resting, you're not moving, feel that breath. 
connect with that breath. It's there. Let's take a minute to thank ourselves for our practice today. Let's rest in Savasana position, offer our body, our mind, and our soul the opportunity to absorb our experience. This is the time to absorb the benefit of your practice and to rest with a calm mind, open to the exploration of self-love. This week, let's practice true acceptance by embracing and appreciating our body as it is right now and no longer feel that we need to alter it to be worthy of someone's love, especially our own. Let's learn to love all the parts of ourselves. If we don't love them, let's change them. If we can't change them, then we need to accept them as they are. Let's remind ourselves that our perception has no bearing on how our body actually looks. So why not choose the ease of acceptance rather than the pain of rejection? When faced upon a challenge, don't forget you always have a choice. You can change it, accept it, or walk away from it, but you can't walk away from your body. Therefore, you need to change it or just accept it the way it is. Let us take some time to embrace the silence and the ruin in our minds. And let's go to that place within ourselves that speaks to us, the stillness that holds the proper questions and all of our answers, our truth and our identity. Let's close our session today with our own personal reflection of the serenity prayer that encourages us to accept the things we cannot change, to seek the courage to change the things that we can, and to find the difference, to know the difference to find the wisdom to know the difference. And one last note, your value does not decrease based on someone's inability to see your worth. Satnam. Let your mind, your body, and your soul absorb the vibrations of the bells bringing your own energies to its appropriate frequency. Slowly bring yourself back into your space, back into the room. Bring up your fingers and toes if you'd like to bring life back to your body. And when you're ready, very slowly and carefully and very gently bring yourself back up. Draw a cross-legged Sukhasana position or any seated position that's comfortable for you. All right, let's do one more before we leave today. So let's do a lovely Sufi roll. So I want you, whatever position you're in right now, put your hands on your, on your knees or on your lap. So again, sitting nice and tall, this is gonna focus on the abdominals, the obliques and the muscles in your back. So I want you to inhale as you press the chest forward. And exhale as you roll to the left, like a little half circle. You're going to exhale yourself to straight spine. Let's go again. Inhale to the left and just roll. Let your abdominals do all the work. And again, inhale. And roll. And one more time to the left. I want you to pay attention on your arms, feel your shoulders, your hands, you're so relaxed, you're completely limp right now. To the right, inhale, push it forward and just roll. Let your arms just hang. And again, to the right, inhale. One more time, inhale. And one more, let's do one more time. Beautiful, this is our lovely Sufi roll. Inhale and exhale around. One of my favorites as well. Mm. Back to straight spine. Bring your hands together. Let's rub vigorously activate our hand chakra. So while we're doing this, I'm gonna tell you what the hand chakra is. It's a little kind of a circle right here in the web of your between, right by your thumb. And it's manual skill and accomplishment. That's what that means, all right? Hands on your heart center, close your eyes. Let's take a nice long smooth breath together to tune in, inhale. One more breath. Shanti, shanti, peace, peace. May love and light be with you always. Namaste. 
All right, lovely, beautiful. And we're all done. That was uh, very nicely done, everyone. Oh, I always feel so much better after a nice, gentle stretch. So thank you again for joining me. It's always my pleasure to be here. Um, those of you who do come to my, uh, in cl my classes, we will be resuming on um, October 28th, back to where, we, where I teach. And um, yay, finally. <laughs> it's been a long road. We've been doing a lot of renovations. So uh, we're finally going to get back on track and get back to our in-person um, classes, which is just always beautiful. So again, my name is Susan. Thank you so much for joining me. And um, have a lovely day. And uh, we'll see you again soon.